Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Anthony Cazenza with CincyJungle.com and the Orange and Black Insider Bengals podcast. Happy to have you with us if you're joining us live, doing a little impromptu mini episode at the end of the business day on Monday afternoon, which aside from being a quarantine for a lot of folks and a day away from work for a lot of folks, the NFL has been hard at work, at least some teams are hard at work, as things kind of opened up. It, uh, this is the tampering period, I guess, if you want to call it that. Teams can negotiate with their own players and try and re-sign some of their own players. They can, you know, they can make some moves uh, or set up contracts to be signed a few days from today. They can also put plans in place for trades to be executed on the actual first day of the league year. So there's a lot to potentially be done on the first day of free agency. Now, there is a lot of news, a lot of movement throughout the league. And, you know, there's some some players that got some deals that were unexpected. You also saw some players get some maybe somewhat more affordable deals than you thought. You know, free agency always seems to be this spending frenzy and, uh, you know, the teams kind of did they, – they, some teams were able to sign guys and make some moves that were affordable, that were kind of a, a little bit uh, surprising in terms of the numbers. But the Cincinnati Bengals did – you know, I'm seeing a lot of things. They didn't, they didn't do anything. They didn't do anything. Um, they did things. They didn't do anything outside free agency. Now, for a lot of us who have followed this team, that is pretty much to be expected – by this by this team they're not going to go after the outside guys on day one that are going to command a lot of money they're going to go after their own guys to start free agency and that's probably where they're going to spend the bulk of their money and then they're going to let the market settle itself and go after some of the lower tier mid to lower tier guys and guys that maybe won't command as much guaranteed money as other teams so you know i think a lot of us including myself got our expectations lifted a little bit with reports from Ian Rappaport and other outlets saying, you know, Duke Tobin and others had said that they are going to spend a bit more in outside free agency. We thought they would be more aggressive, at least early in the process, not the case. So here's what we know so far. Okay. AJ Green, first and foremost, is a, is a, received the franchise tag. I think we all know that that was going to happen. That sets up the team keeping their star wide receiver for at least this year and you know maybe going forward they can they can work out a uh, you can see here I, I shared a screen for those of you joining live on the video um, a AJ Green is uh, placed under the franchise tag, he will be at least on the Bengals for 2020, barring a trade scenario that comes up, barring some sort of scenario where the Bengals are able to work out a long-term deal before July 15th. As of now, Green has said that he will play under the tag. He will play for the team under the tag. At least this is what he said earlier this year. He'll play under the tag if necessary. He's set to make about $18 million with with this franchise tag designation. Um, he would prefer a long-term deal, and if he does not have a long-term deal, training camp, off-season workouts, etc., may be in jeopardy um, because he won't want to risk injury on a one-year deal with the team. Can't really blame him, I guess. Um, but on one hand, it's a smart move by the Cincinnati Bengals on 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 a number of fronts, right? I mean, star star player, one of the best players you've ever drafted, borderline Hall of Fame player at this point in his career. You've got him for at least the year at a minimum could be a bridge star wide receiver if healthy for your new quarterback, Joe Burrow. By the way, we'll talk about quarterbacks in just a second. You've got him there. He's going to make a good amount of money. It is potentially a, a prove it deal to, you know, are you healthy? Are you going to be able to perform that sort of thing? So, and, and if the Bengals are able to work out something where they can maybe do a two or three year deal where he can possibly end his career with the Cincinnati Bengals, spread that money out, that cap hit out over a couple of years, give them a little bit more flexibility this this year, then, you know, so be it. 
you know, some people don't like it because of the health issues. Granted, he hasn't played a down of, of significant football for this team since autumn of fall of 18. So it's been a long time since we've seen AJ Green play a meaningful down of football for the Bengals. But, you know, there were some rumors that Joe Burrow would like to see AJ Green back in Cincinnati. He's here for at least 2020. We'll see what happens beyond that. The Bengals also tendered a handful, I believe it was four of their eight restricted free agents, Alex Redmond, Brandon Wilson, Josh Tupo, um, among them. Those guys are, uh, they were all tendered at their, at the original round level. So basically, since many of those guys were undrafted free agents, they are, they would not, the Bengals would not receive compensation if a team chose to match the offer. Seathan Carter is the fourth, by the way. Um, a uh, the, the team would not receive any compensation for some of those undrafted guys if a team were to match the salaries given to those players, with the exception of Brandon Wilson, who was a sixth round pick. If a team matches, him, matches the offer for him, uh, the Bengals would get a sixth round pick for him. Now, you know, you look at it and you go, okay, why, why Seathan Carter? Why Alex Redman? Well, they seem to like what they bring in terms of positional versatility. Um, you know, I, I think that uh, Alex Redman is a, is a favorite of Jim Turner, is a favorite of this franchise because he's made it through both the Marvin Lewis era and now in, on his second year in the Zach Taylor era. So um, a little bit shocking that they, they brought some of those guys back. Josh Tupo, I thought was a good move because Andrew Billings is also set to hit free agency. They need at least one of those two big guys to return. Um, little shock that it was at the original round tender, but we'll see if those, if, you know, the team wants to hang on to the, to those, if things are, if those contracts are matched. So four guys, four unrestricted free agents that the Bengals hung on to along with the franchise tagging of AJ Green. I'm Anthony Cazenza again with CincyJungle.com and the Orange and Black Insider Bengals podcast. We're just recapping day one of the start of free agency, the start of the tampering period of free agency. Kind of a little bit of uh, a letdown and a weird day. You know, I think if the Bengals were maybe set to be a little more proactive, maybe some of the stuff that's happening on the exterior of the football landscape being the COVID-19 and all that kind of stuff, kind of taking over the news cycle, uh, maybe that's caused them to be a little more hesitant to dole out big money right away. If, if they were even in that place, I'd be surprised if they were truly in that in that realm, as some reports may have suggested. But again, I'm Anthony Cazenza. You're listening to the Orange and Black Insider, a little update on free agency. Get the show how you can on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, Megaphone, Google Play, iHeartRadio, or uh, as many of you are tuning in right now, you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. All of us, all of our, all of these uh, episodes of the Orange and Black Insider, whether it's these news update mini episodes, our weekly show that we usually do on Wednesday, that sort of thing. Those are viewable also as we do them live on Cincy Jungle's Facebook page, as well as the Orange and Black Insider YouTube channel. Going to be here for a few more minutes going over some other news and notes around the NFL, around the league. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of upset people. And, and to be honest, I, I was... If you follow me on Twitter, you probably saw I was a bit irritated. I usually get a little cranky this time of year, given the what what I cover with this team or what I don't get to cover with this with this team. So here's here are some other news and notes that we know so far. Clayton Fedulum, backup safety, uh, really kind of one of the special teams captains, one of the best special teams players, reserve safety, made a couple plays on defense when called upon over the past couple of years. He was a seventh round pick a few years ago. Free agent is apparently headed to Miami on a three-year deal. So he will no longer be in Cincinnati. And you got to think you give Darren Simmons this raise as an assistant head coach of the team. He had one of the best special teams units all around in the NFL last year. Really one of the only things that the Bengals did well last year was, was play special teams. And you get rid of you don't get rid of them, but you lose one of your most valuable special teams guys. Now you have to hope that Darren Simmons, maybe with another late round pick with a defensive back or some something of that nature, maybe a Seathan Carter who is 
known to play special teams. Maybe these guys will step up. Maybe Darren Simmons will find another diamond in the rough in the late rounds to help his unit. And you kind of have that faith in him. But uh, on a day where you kind of tread water at best, you lose a valuable special teams guy uh, uh, to a, to the Miami Dolphins. So Clayton Fedulum appears to be gone. That'll probably be official a few days from now. The other big news is Andy Dalton. And as we took the air not too long ago, about 10 minutes ago, as of now on Monday evening, he has not been dealt anywhere. There have been some talks. Apparently multiple reports have the Bengals speaking with the bears. Um, you know, they're hesitant to give up anything beyond a day three pick in the NFL draft, meaning round four or lower is probably what they're what they're offering the Cincinnati Bengals because the Bears don't have many high picks this year or they don't have a first round pick rather. So, um, you know, the Bengals want one of those high picks. They're also, they being the Bears, are also apparently talking to the Jaguars about acquiring Nick Foles, who has uh, a much higher contract number. I believe it's $22 million as opposed to $17.7 million with Andy Dalton. Um, so, you know, the Bengals are looking to get that contract off the books. They've made it known that basically signing A.J. Green and getting rid of the Andy Dalton contract would be a wash for them, and they would be able to use that money potentially for other players. Um so, I, I, you know, maybe this inactivity of the Bengals not signing an outside player on the or announcing a deal in place on the first day of, of free agency, the tampering period, maybe that's predicated on them losing the Andy Dalton, getting rid of that Andy Dalton contract off the books. I still think they could get creative and sign someone that's impactful without needing to move that contract first, but... Maybe this is a conservative franchise when it comes to money, comes to contracts. So maybe they like to play it slow like that. It's a little frustrating. You want to see the Bengals make a move. You also don't want to see them make a move when they possibly could have got more for a player. So it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. You've also got Tampa Bay making a run at Tom Brady, apparently a very aggressive run. So, you know, if they do or do not get Tom Brady, are the Buccaneers in play for Andy Dalton if they lose out on him? Are the Patriots in play for Andy Dalton if they lose Tom Brady uh, and the Bears maybe grab Nick Foles instead of Dalton? Um, you know, that that remains to be seen. You know, there are, there are moves where the Bengals could trade Andy Dalton and eat some of that cap space, but I think that if they're – really, um, you know, their ideal situation is to get a round three pick or higher and not absorb any of that money. Um, I think if they're able to do that with a team, that's that's the move that they would make. We've seen the Bengals wait out trades. We've seen them take a hard line with certain players, certain trades. Carson Palmer comes to mind, and it has paid off for them. They have gotten what they've wanted out of deals. So, uh, you know, other times we've seen it bite them in the butt big time in the form of holdouts and all kinds of other things. So, you know, it, it's interesting to it's going to be interesting to see what plays out with the Andy Dalton situation. But, uh, you know, as of now he is on the Bengals roster, that contract is on their books. So we'll see what happens with this. I'm seeing a lot of upset people. I, 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 uh, I understand that there. Um, the, the other facets to it, are really some of the other targets both we on our weekly episode my co-host John Sheeran and I have brought up a number of different potential free agent targets that the Bengals could look at some were a little bit of pipe dreams in terms of cost and whatnot some could have been uh you know guys that they could they could have that could even marginally upgrade certain position groups that need help so far they've shown interest in defensive linemen and in the form of rotational pass rush guys. They've courted Chris Smith, who ended up signing in, in Carolina. And then they also reportedly brought in Derek Wolf for a visit, a guy that can you could probably place it in different spots on the line to try and get pressure going forward. He's on the backside of his career, though. So they want a rotational pass rusher to help out up front, obviously replacing Kerry Wynn, who was, you know, zero impact last year. So uh you know, this is the, that's one of the areas that the Bengals are looking to shore up. Um, 
you know, hasn't been too much movement on the on the defensive line market aside from the Niners dealing um, Eric Armstead to the um, excuse me to Forrest Buckner to the uh, Colts there. So uh, you know that's that's an interesting situation. Um, and and Indianapolis, by the way, is another team to watch in the Dalton sweepstakes. They've got Jacoby Brissett and they just gave up a first round pick that they would have maybe potentially used towards one of this, one of the guys in this deep group of quarterbacks in the 2020 rookie class. So Indy's a team to keep an eye on in terms of trade partners with Dalton as well. You know, the Bengals are always teams that like to see how things shift out, um, like to see how the market settles and then they dive in and do some things as frustrating as that is for some of us to see them be reactive instead of proactive. Um, that is the way they choose to do business, especially this time of year. Uh, but you saw guys, Jadavian Clowney, not that he was really in their wheelhouse, but an edge player, a guy that you know rushes the passer. He apparently is being courted heavily by the Giants. Um, on the offensive line, Graham Glasgow, Ryan Glasgow's brother got a pretty big deal with the Denver Broncos, so he is off the market. Uh, Joe Thune got, um, or Tooney, however you want to pronounce his name, uh, got the franchise tag with the Patriots. Uh, and then you also had Brandon Scherf, the other uh, stellar guard with the Redskins, get the tag in Washington. So a lot of guys essentially off the market that the Bengals could have tried to court. Um, you know, you also saw Jack Conklin, a guy that the Bengals could have targeted as a right tackle replacement for Bobby Hart. He went to a division rival in the Cleveland Browns for a, a pretty manageable deal, a, a good deal for both sides, but a pretty manageable deal. So he's off the market. And these are kind of the guys you knew were going to be early names that are going to be moving. Um, you know, those those guys on the offensive line are gone. Uh, Nick Kwiatkowski, the, the former Bears linebacker, agreed in principle with the Raiders. Uh, you had Christian Kirksey agree to a deal with the Packers. Um, so, you know, all of a sudden the linebacker market is dwindling a little bit. Nick Vigil st still has not signed anywhere as of Monday. So if they choose to re-sign him, they can. Uh, I, I don't believe as we sit here today, Blake Martinez has uh, signed a contract. So he's still lingering out there. That's a possibility for the team as well. So that's kind of where we're at right now. They are not very being very aggressive with outside guys. They have re-signed some of their inside guys, albeit guys that, um, you know, one was a, a very predictable move, expensive one in AJ Green, but predictable. The other uh, is in the unrestricted free agents. Um, so uh, we'll see. I know we sit here and we, you know, we get frustrated this time of year. I will say this. I seem to remember last year that it was late day one slash into day two where they started making some deals for players. Granted, those were guys that were their own. Um, you know, your CJ Uzama, your Bobby Hart, your Preston Brown, those guys, that's when they started making contract contract offers and signing to them, you know, signing those guys at the, in the first couple of days. We'll see if, you know, your Nick Vigils, Andrew Billings, Darquez Denards, if those are the guys that they start targeting before they start moving outside. I wouldn't be surprised to see Derek Wolf get signed. It just seems like a guy that fits the Bengals mold, local kid, former high round pick on the backside of his career, maybe can give you some spot duty and could probably be had for a reasonable price. Really wouldn't move the needle too much, I don't think, in terms of PR and fan uh, fan love of the move. But, uh, you know, I, I, think, uh, I think that's what probably around the tier the Bengals will be looking at going forward. They may grab some some players that could start for them, but uh, I think they'll also look look internally. The big move will probably be what happens with Andy Dalton in terms of a trade if they get draft capital or if they end up releasing him. Um, I, I don't think releasing him is going to be the case. I think the Bengals will get something out of him. It's just a matter of what and and obviously who he goes to. Thanks for joining us right now. Uh, you know, we've got, there's a lot to kind of digest, but at the same time, it's, it was also a little quiet for the Cincinnati Bengals. So it was a little bit of a dichotomy today, but appreciate you joining us for this update. We'll give you more throughout the week and the days ahead. Uh, keep it to our channel, not only for our show, these news updates, uh, the weekly show we have, but also Matt Minnick's Chalk Talk film review sessions. We have those, um, Orange is the New Black is a podcast on the SB Nation audio 
channel. So we've got a lot coming up on the on the Orange and Black Insider. We recently had former Bengals linebacker Adrian Ross, former defensive back Solomon Wilcots uh, that we interviewed. We were pretty pretty stoked to have those guys. Not this Wednesday, but next, we are tentatively set to have Icky Woods join the program too. So that should be an interesting one and uh, a fun one going forward. So hopefully you join us or you download after the fact iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Megaphone. You can get the stuff on YouTube. Appreciate all of the support. Keep it to CincyJungle.com for news, opinions, analysis. I'm Anthony Cazenza. We'll talk to you soon.